hopefully. Good morning, everybody. This is Morgan Denny with the Institute of Clinical Excellence, coming to you from Portland, Oregon this morning, bright and early as per the usual. Hope everyone is having a fabulous Tuesday. Um, I wanted to talk this morning a little bit about when we have those patients where things don't really go as planned. Um, I currently have a student, and one of the things that we ended up talking about yesterday was what you do when it doesn't seem like PT is helping, like when it doesn't feel effective. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that she and I discussed yesterday in order to just kind of get these ideas out there. So, you know, we all have those patients where day one evaluation hits. We feel like we've got a solid hold on everything. This patient's going to be one we knock out of the park. And then by visit three or four, it's starting to feel a little bit less secure in our, in our beings, right? So those patients that don't seem to be reporting an improvement don't seem to be making a change. So the first thing I think when we have those patients, which we're all going to have during our careers many, many times, you know, the first thing with those patients is to really go back and make sure things aren't going as planned. It's very easy as a therapist to hear your patient's complaints and to hear their subjective report, which you've gotten them to think about when they have their symptoms and those subjective asterisks and exactly when they come on. And when they come in and they report pain right off the bat or symptoms or problems or issues, you know, it's easy for us to get wrapped up in that and to think that they're not improving. So one of the best things to do right off the bat is just ask your patient, you know, do you feel like you're getting better? Do you feel like these exercises are helping? You know, do you think that this hands-on work that we're doing is helping your symptoms or making you feel better or move better or change A, B, or C, whatever you've determined? So be sure you check in because I've often found that even when we subjectively as therapists feel like we're not making the improvement we want to see, oftentimes the patient doesn't feel that way. They often feel like they're doing just fine and they're coming along well. So it's good to check in with your patients. Um, the next thing to check back on is make sure that from day one when you do that sweet kick-ass evaluation, that all of those little things that you wanted to um, treat and reassess and look into, that you're really doing those consistently. I think it's really easy when you have a quick 30 minutes with someone to get off track, to do the two things that you remember from the last time you know, that seem to have some effect and to re forget to go back and do some of those other things that might have seemed ancillary day one, but that were major factors that we needed to address, right? So it's, it's good to go back and make sure you're consistent with that plan of care that you set out day one and those exact goals the patient was looking towards. You know, and that said, being sure you've been doing the same thing consistently long enough to make a change. For example, if you saw a patient day one did manual therapies A and B and then did something completely different day two, something completely different day three, it's possible that you were right on track you know, from day one, but that you weren't doing things consistently enough for them to actually make a change. You know, someone that's got developing hip OA and a lot of capsular stiffness and adhesions, they're not just going to be done with hip mobilization after one treatment, moved on to, you know, I don't know, tool-assisted soft tissue stuff. Like, you're going to have to be consistent with that care for there to be a lasting change that the patient feels functionally. So being sure that you're consistent with the things that you've determined to be important in the first place is also a key factor that it's good to go back and recheck and make sure that you haven't gone down some rabbit hole that isn't quite the right rabbit hole. Um, you know, the next thing to do if you're having a patient that's not coming along as well as you thought they should is to go back and reassess. You know, there are always going to be those small factors that we are reassessing every session. You know, if it's a, a detriment in a range of motion, you're going back and you're checking that every day. Not only does that build confidence in the patient that you know what you're doing and you're looking after them, but also gives you an idea of if what you're doing is working, if range of motion is something that you think changing will help the patient. You know, so reassessing the little stuff. But when you really feel like nothing you're doing is changing anything or like you've missed the boat, go back and do a real reassessment, like a big reevaluation. Take 15 minutes, look at their problem with fresh eyes, go back, do everything that you did the first time, see if it's changed for that matter. But also go in and do stuff that you didn't have a chance to do the first time. You know, sometimes reassessments seem like they're a stressful situation for clinicians where they feel less confident because they, they're having to go back and do a reassessment. But remember that to the patient, 
if you're doing a reassessment, that shows them that you care about their situation and that you're not just going off of some recipe sheet and doing the five things that you were told that you were supposed to do. Like that really shows them that you not only are invested in their care, but that you're paying attention. Um, and honestly, often reassessments will come up with new findings that weren't there day one. I mean, we have to remember the human is dynamic. You know, like what mattered day one won't always matter day five. And so if it's dynamic, we have to be dynamic and change with it. So being able to reassess that patient and go back and see what has changed or if there are other factors that have come out of the woodwork now. You know, I always say patients are onions, so we peel them away in layers. So there might be a new layer showing day four that you didn't find during the evaluation because it just wasn't there to see. But now that you see it, if it's a factor and it's important, then it's good for us to get in there and treat that. So as you're reassessing, make sure you're making the reassessment reassuring, not disturbing, right? This shouldn't be a scary thing. It should build confidence for your patient in you and your knowledge. Um, the next thing to think about, you know, if you seem like you're on the right track and you've reassessed and you feel like you've got the right factors in mind, just change gears a little bit. You know, if your treatment has focused more on active stuff, maybe move it somewhat to passive. If your treatment has been all passive or all manual therapy treatment, maybe move into the active realm more. You know, and that doesn't mean you have to change the type of treatment entirely. You know, if you've been doing mobilization and some cupping, maybe you try some manipulation with tool assisted soft tissue stuff or some myofascial release. You know, or if you've been doing smaller exercises, Maybe you need to move away from those and do bigger functional ones and vice versa. Some people who are doing exercises that are, I say to patients, that are too big for their bodies. If you're doing an exercise that's too big for your body, you know, if the body just can't handle it, it's too much overload on the system, there's not enough internal stability, maybe you need to back them down to some of those basic core exercises. Wake some muscle groups up. Get some circulation back into the area at hand and just not the hand necessarily, but the area that we're looking at. But maybe we just need to get some circulatory return back into that region so the patient's symptoms can calm down, they can get some muscular awareness, maybe it's more proprioceptive. So don't always feel like you have to change everything, but maybe switch some things up. I think if nothing else, the patient feels like, ooh, that's new, that's something different, that could have an effect. And so you get that buy-in again and that changed patient expectation that can really, really help with the patient feeling better and getting better and setting up that own personal expectation that they're going to heal, which we all know is super important. Now, within that treatment, make sure when you change gears, when you rock that nervous system's boat, that you don't rock it too hard. We don't want our patients falling out of the boat here. So if you're changing things up, don't change everything. You know, keep some things consistent. It's important to remember, especially with our patients who have underlying conditions that are affecting their overall healing, like diabetes or other autoimmune kind of disorders, that their system is going to be more sensitive to change. So make sure when you're changing things up, you're not going from a five minute passive program at home to a 15 minute resistance training program. Like people with cardiovascular issues might not respond well to that people with underlying problems. It might just be something that's too much for their nervous system. So we have to remember not to overload the nervous system or overload our patient just because we want to change things up. Also, don't fall into the, the caveat of patients really wanting to change things. It's very common to say like, let's do this. Like we're excited, we're cheerleaders, we're gonna do everything. And they're ready to go, like they're on board but we have to be sure that we're not changing so much that they're actually gonna come back with increased complaints, not because they weren't game and not because you were doing the wrong thing, but because it was too much of a nervous system overload. So be careful with that. Another thing to think about, if you're having a patient that doesn't seem to be getting better, see about involving some other people. You know, whether it's sending them to one of your coworkers to do an assessment or a utilization review, or just get a fresh set of eyes that has a different perspective on this stuff, that's a great thing to do. You know, maybe this person just isn't ready to respond to physical therapy. Don't take it personally, but maybe refer them to an acupuncturist if that seems like the right thing, or a naturopath, or a nutritionist. Get some other element involved, you know, and when you do that, guys, don't let go of your patient. You know, just because you've referred them on to some other clinician that's gonna help them, doesn't mean that you should abandon them. 
especially our patients who have had ongoing systems and persistent pain, like those are the people that may be investing in you and that may have taken them a while to get there. So when you refer them somewhere else, it's important not to just like wash your hands of them. It's important to just keep up with them. So whether you're gonna see them in the clinic or not, after you've referred them out to another practitioner, you know, it's important that you're keeping up with them via email or phone, or maybe you just decrease your frequency of physical therapy to once every two weeks to once a month so you can recheck. It's amazing how much sometimes the other practices can do a good job at improving range of motion or helping with muscle tone or doing all the things that we as PTs feel like we need to do and are good at and are very often good at. But a lot of patients just aren't gonna to respond to physical therapy and it's not your fault. You know, it's just that certain people and their bodies need certain things in different time frames. And if it's not your time, then don't take it personally and let your ego get in the way. Get that person to someone that's gonna help them and then keep tabs on them. It may be that that acupuncturist gets them through whatever they're going through and once they build to a certain level, PT becomes effective. So you don't wanna lose that patient. You just wanna make sure you're doing all you can to kind of help them come along faster, right? Now, throughout all of this, one of the most important things is just to stay consistent with your demeanor. Um, I talked about this a little bit on another PT on ICE session that dealt with having patients with mental health issues, but I really think this is just as important with all of our patients. You know, we need to stay consistent with our demeanor and always be positive. You know, if, the, if patients come in and we feel like they're not getting better, the worst thing for us to do is to mirror that and to show them or to give them the idea that we think they're not getting better. Because patients will pick up on that really quickly. And if they lose that idea that care is being effective, they're not gonna buy in, they're not gonna do their exercises, they're not gonna get better unless they think that you believe in it as well. Um, so we need to make sure that no matter what happens, even if we're not seeing the changes we wanna see, we wanna make sure that our consistent demeanor is always positive, that we're always reassuring, that we're always you know, making sure the patient feels cared for and that we feel like their symptoms are real and that we're assessing them and addressing them appropriately. But we're never gonna you know, give that affect of fear. We're never gonna show that we don't think we know what's going on and we're never going to like play off their symptoms so that they don't feel like we're hearing them, right? So we're gonna make sure that we're always consistent with our care, we're gonna change our treatment plans if we need to, we're gonna reassess as much as we need to, and guys, if they're not appropriate for PT, or if PT is just not working in this time frame, get them to a practitioner that's gonna be able to make a difference in this time frame, and keep tabs on them. Don't lose your patience. Just remember guys, you know, if our jobs were static and every patient came in with a recipe, it would be really boring. So when you have a patient that throws you for a loop, don't get frustrated, just stay with them and keep it real, right? Okay guys, have a good Tuesday. Don't get frustrated with difficult patients, just keep reassessing, keep it positive, have a great day.